So in the preceding videos, we learned how to use parallax to calculate the transverse velocity of a star with respect to our star right here. So say this star was moving that way. If we are observing it over a period of time, our line of sight to that star as it moved from there to there would change and we would get a parallax angle that we could use to calculate what's called the transverse velocity, namely the velocity perpendicular to our line of sight. We can calculate using parallax. But if we want to figure out what this real speed is, real space speed toward us, we can't just use this component of that velocity called transverse velocity to calculate the speed because it doesn't tell us whether the object's moving toward us or away from us. So we also have to calculate this component of velocity, namely how fast is it moving toward us directly, even though it's not moving directly toward us. What part of this velocity is the component of velocity moving toward us along our radius of sight here? And we call that a radial velocity. And that calculation is actually quite simple because this object's emitting light at all times. It's a luminous object. And that light is approaching us at 3 times 10 to the 8th uh, meters per second. And if it's the object that's emitting the light is moving toward us, we experience the Doppler effect where as it emits waves, the waves it's continually emitting are catching up to the waves already emitted because it's moving in the direction of the waves that are approaching us. And so those uh, waves experience a Doppler blue shift. They seem to move closer together. And of course, waves that are closer together than waves that are farther apart have a shorter wavelength, and that is what gives visible light a bluish tinge because the blue wavelengths are much shorter than the red wavelengths. Now, on the other hand, if the object had been moving in a different way and part of that velocity were away from us on our line of radial sight, then, of course, the waves laid down by the object would start getting farther apart. I could picture it this way. Here's a wave front, then the object moves here. Here's the next wave front. Object moves here. Here's the next wave front. But you see, if instead it were moving toward us and it emitted a wave front, then the next one would be closer to the original wave front. And so we get shorter waves. If it's moving in the opposite direction, we get longer waves and what's called red shifting of the waves. And we can actually look at light waves in specific frequencies and measure how much they've been shifted one way or the other. And let's say, for example, we saw um, a certain wavelength that we know the star emits because it is a wave emitted by excited hydrogen atoms, which all stars have. And the wave was actually a little bit shorter than we expected. Let's say it was blue shifted by 0.05%. Well, what this literally means is that that star is approaching us at this percent of the speed of light. And then all we have to do is use this percent times the speed of light to measure the radial speed toward us. And of course, that means all we need to do is take the speed of light, 3.0 times 10 to the fifth kilometers, per second, and multiply not by the percentage, because we know all percentages can be expressed as percentages or as decimal values. 25% is the same as 1 quarter or 0.25 of something. So yes, if I wanted to know how many of um, was, or how much was 25% of 400, I wouldn't multiply 400 by 25 because, of course, that would give me a much bigger number. However, if I multiplied 400 by 1 quarter, or 0.25, the decimal percentage, I'd get 100, which is, of course, a quarter of 400, or 25%. Same thing here. We're trying to say 
what part of the speed of light is the speed of this object approaching us. And since its light is shifted in the blue range toward us at this percent of shift, we will use the decimal percent of the speed of light. And the decimal percent isn't 0 0.05, it's 0 0.0005. And a quick multiplication, and we get 150 kilometers per second toward us. Because, of course, this was the percentage of blue shift, and blue shift means shorter waves, and Doppler tells us that means the object's moving toward us along our radial sight line here. Now, had we had a red shift, the calculation would have been the same if there had been a 0.05% red shift. In other words, the lines on the spe spectrum that we're observing are just moved toward the red direction by a certain fraction instead of toward the blue direction by a certain fraction. So we make the exact same calculation, but because it was calculated on a red shift difference, we would get 150 kilometers per second away from us instead. Now knowing two velocities, radial and transverse, and yes, on the last video we discussed how to use parallax to get this part of the motion. And now we know how to use radial velocity to calculate this part of the motion, or how to calculate radial velocity, which is this part of the motion. We can now know the true space motion of the object. Because even if you don't know what addition of vectors means, I'm going to redraw these lines. This represents our radial velocity toward us is 150 kilometers per second. And in our last example problem, let's say we got a transverse velocity of uh, 90 kilometers per second. Then the real velocity is actually this right here. And this is going to create for us a quadrilateral meaning that this velocity can be calculated using the Pythagorean theorem because the true velocity is essentially the hypotenuse of the radial velocity and this, which is also this, the transverse velocity. That's nice that, yes, the real space velocity is the hypotenuse of a triangle you could create from the radial velocity and the transverse velocity. So yes, in this example, were these the transverse and radial velocities of some, some star, I could say that the true velocity, the space velocity of the star squared had to equal 150 kilometers per second all squared plus 90 kilometers per second all squared. And just a little bit of calculating. That means if we want the velocity, we can take the square root of 150 squared plus 90 squared, and we would get a true velocity of that object as 174 kilometers per second. So yes, it doesn't appear to be moving at that speed against the distant background of stars. That's what the transverse velocity measures. And it isn't moving toward us at 174 kilometers per second. That would be the radial velocity. No, instead it's moving somewhere between that background change and the change in our direction. And that true velocity would be the 174 kilometers per second.